Joining us now is Ojinika Ojio, with stories trending around the world. Hello, Junix. Good Louder. morning. Good morning. How are you this morning? <laughs> Good morning, Ayo. How are morning, you? Oji. Good morning, Rufai. Good morning, Rufai. All right, let's get right into it. My time has been taken. Well, let's begin what's trending here in Nigeria. The Minister of Women Affairs, Uju Kennedy Ohaneye, last week threatened to sue the Maitama District Hospital in Abuja over the death of greatness Olorun Femi, a 33-year-old woman who was stabbed and pushed out of a moving vehicle on September 26th. In an hour viral video, the minister could be heard accusing the hospital staff of negligence and vowed to use Olorun Femi's death to set an example. Little thing that you people would have done to resuscitate somebody ends up leaving that person to die off. And you people were still asking the people to carry the cops out of the hospital. The videos are there. We have evidences on this issue. But we want to use your hospital as a typical example that it will never happen again anywhere else. Because that girl that died belonged to somebody. She's a Nigerian citizen. She was a Nigerian citizen. It's a state child. With due respect, the video trending was false. Yes. This lady, when she was brought in, she was brought in as a BID. We call it BID. Brought in dead. My nurse promptly saw and called in the doctor. What did call. they use to show she was dead? How did they know that? She checked the radio pulse. So Madam, is it enough checked. to just check the pulse? Don't you people have oxygen? Don't you have those things they use to pump the heart? Fixed okay, analytic. how do we see this video you're talking about? This is with the, the, the MD. panel. The, the, the panel. The I have joined the panel. Yeah, okay. Give me a seat. Okay, what is it? We all know, you and I know, that this is not the first time this thing is happening. It happens in most of the hospitals. They keep rejecting people. We're changing the narratives now with the new president. It cannot continue. I went to Metama Hospital to get the names of those people that were on duty that day to sue them to court because I will not leave any stone unturned on this particular issue. Well, all right. While on Monday, the minister threatened to sue the United Nations for allegedly mismanaging funds met for Nigeria. Kennedy or Nahuane made the comment at a press conference where she accused the UN of obtaining funds on behalf of the country without remitting them. The minister further threatened that if the global body does not furnish her ministry with the necessary records on or before November 15th, she would take legal action. And I stand here as the Minister of Women Affairs to demand from UN, all the UN, that we want account of all the money they source from donors in the name of Nigeria. We want to see the account of what they did with it. And if you don't give us these accounts, at least let Nigerians see what has been going on, then you plead with them, apologize to them, and change your way. From 16th of October to November 15th, if we don't get those reports published for Nigerians to see, we are heading to court. From 16th of October to November 8th, they get our pre-action uh, letter. That is to prepare them that by 15 we are heading to court. And I'm promising Nigeria that as far as immediately it is that 15, by the next day you will hear the lawsuit number. And all of you will gather to that place the day the, law, the, the case will come and, and come for them to defend the money they are using you to collect from them. Well, all right, Dr. Bati, over to you. So many things to discuss here first. Uh, I, mean, I mean, we'll see the action she's going to take. Uh, with all UN, okay. all UN to start with. <laughs> but let me just say, <laughs> yeah, I mean, the first story, as well, I would like for you to tie both of them in because I wouldn't want you to forget the first story. We all know that a panel had already been set up for Olorun Femi's death. May her soul rest in peace. But I mean, she went ahead to, you know, add her ministry to that panel as well. Dr. Bati. Okay, first, the uh, lady that uh, died that yeah. was pushed out of, uh, yes. out of uh, a one chance vehicle. Yes. Uh, uh, greatness alone for me. Very unfortunate. Yes, incident. absolutely. But the concern here is well placed that, you know, when people are gunshot victims or, you know, they have an emergency, they go to the hospital. We've had many cases whereby, you know, the hospital will reject, you know, those persons in distress. Yes. Either they would say, oh, the person was brought in there, or they will direct them to go to another 
uh, hospital. Now, the issue, when it became really uh, a source of concern, was that these uh, hospitals, they, they say they don't want to get involved in any, in any police matter. Mm. So they, they would then insist that you go and bring police report first mm. and find a way of indemnifying them. The second part also is monetary. When uh, you have an emergency, you go to the hospital, you know, maybe many of these private hospitals, they will insist you must deposit a certain amount of money. Mm. But in this case, this is a general hospital, you know, government hospital. But it's shocking that, you know, government hospitals also ask persons, you know, in emergency situations to make uh, a deposit. Well, it was for this reason that in uh, 2017, there was a law, you know, that was uh, made compulsory treatment of gunshot yes. victims uh, law of 2017. And there are penalties there, even for doctors, for medical personnel, you know, of imprisonment and even option of fine or both. Because as uh, Professor Patti, the Minister of Health was saying the other day, and you should know, you know, he was saying that, look, the primary job of a medical personnel is to save lives, whatever the circumstance. And that is what the Hippocratic Oath is all about. But things have, so, have gone so bad in Nigeria that even doctors run away from patients, you it's know, horrible. for monetary reasons horrible. and for police uh, problems. So uh, the concern that she has expressed there, that's okay. But about the UN, right? she says all UN. <laughs> the UN has so many agencies, okay? And it has a membership of 193 uh, countries. And it doesn't collect money on behalf of uh, countries. You know, uh, it's not a, it's not a donor, uh, you know, money collecting uh, agency. The relevant agency, in our own case, she is Minister of Women Affairs, is UN Women. Okay, and UN Women, they are big job. It's about ensuring that there's no gender, there's no discrimination against uh, women, that the sustainable uh, uh, development goal uh, in the in Agenda 2030, with regard to gender equality is achieved. UN women, you know, uh, brought out uh, the Beijing uh, uh, proposal on CEDAW, elimination of uh, convention on the elimination of discrimination against women. These are the things that they do if she's talking about UN women. But in any case, she didn't tell us where the money was collected on behalf of Nigeria. <laughs> she didn't tell us who the donors were. She has no clue about the amount. Now she says she wants to take the UN to court. Which court? Where? Is, is it, I mean, is it to the International Criminal Court or International I Court mean, of Justice? Is this the Ministry of Women Affairs that This, is, this is why I, I made a point that one of the major omissions of this administration yes. is that President Tinubu is here to organize a retreat for his ministers. Many of these people are just coming from nowhere with no sound knowledge. Yes. And then you go and give them an important ministry yes. to run. They will be behaving like a villager all over the yes. place, not understanding the basic issues involved. Yes. But the whole idea of a, of a ministerial retreat will be for you to bring experts, people who have been in the particular ministries, to give them reading materials and then to guide them so that you won't find this kind of, uh, you know, this kind of embarrassment, I dare say that what this minister has done by saying she's going to sue the UN and the details of which we do not know. She, she's causing Nigeria gross embarrassment. Yes. And she needs to be properly educated All right. about the relationship between uh, the United Nations and its 193 uh, 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 Body member Body nations Body. who are so sovereign states. Because the main objective of the UN is to promote global peace and justice across the world. No, <laughs> she has caused us major embarrassment, yeah. very major ones, and it's not a laughing matter, mm -hmm. Please, on behalf of Nigeria, I would like to beg you and please, this, just just act like you didn't see this video. I'm on my knees, oh, begging. Please, just act like you didn't see this. It's AI. It was AI that generated it. <laughs> it didn't happen. How can you be making me no, laugh? No, 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 no. I'm funny. serious, oh. Please, just AI you and generated. just see that it's AI that generated it. Do you please. know also the kind of atrocities this woman has been committing in meetings with multilateral agencies? Hmm. The kind of things she's been saying. You, we are lucky that she's saying this one in public. Yeah. Yeah, that's the what she's saying to UN agencies like UNICEF and the likes and some other people in private. Yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Do you know the butt of jokes we have become? 
All and right. that's why we say leadership matters. Please, it's also incumbent. It's not everybody that tries to run for president that should be given positions. And let's stop this quota system. Let's stop this quota system. No, we need a quota system. Just give it to the right people. Okay, just give it to the right people. Yeah. Thank you for correcting me, Ayo. Just give it to the right people because people like this denigrate that system. Yeah. And she has been a joke and a laughing stock everywhere, making this country, you know, look like we are jokes. And please, this is not a reflection of Nigerians. This is the same woman that talked about that was glorifying child labor. Life on a TV platform. Yeah. This is the same woman that was trying to harass people that, you know, they are just be going through the case of, you know, sexual harassment, allegedly, and things like that. All right, Rufai. I just needed to, to say that. Yes, it's I very it. sad. I, but I, I feel it's unfair that I let two women, uh, two men talk about a, a woman. Uh, uh, um, now, I, um, quickly, just a, I don't know if I'm comment. going to say anything different. The yes. only thing I want to say is that international organizations like the UN have a very strict reporting process, mm -hmm. especially when it has to do with financial matters. Yes. And so what I would recommend, let me give you a recommendation, because I, I, I mean, this is a woman and I really want her to succeed. Perhaps she should get a team together. She has the money to employ people who would manage and help, you know, policy advisors who would, you know, vet her statements and her, you know, her speeches before she goes, let her not speak off the cuff. Yeah. We want her to succeed, but she needs right. to do the job and represent women well. Well said, Ayo. We'll take another story. Well, Senator representing Adamawa North District, Elisha Abu, has been trending on social media after he accused the president of the Senate, Godswila Pabio, of being or being behind his sacking by a court of appeal in Abuja on Monday. While speaking to the press, the senator who became infamous for assaulting a woman at a sex toy shop back in 2020 also alleged that four other senators who worked against the emergence of Akpabio as Senate president had been targeted for removal from the Red Chamber through the courts, including Senator Oji Uzo Kalu, who he says is the next target of the planned coup. Let's take a look. I want to tell you that I'm a hero of democracy. I'm a martyr of democracy. I am been actually bewitch hunt by government because of my critical stand on national issues. That is the truth. It is obvious. I heard it from reliable source, which I will not call the name now, that five senators will be removed from the Senate. Those who did not stand with my brother and my elder brother, my good colleague, distinguished Senate President Akwabio. Those who did not vote for him, five of us are going. I am number one. Oju Zokalu will go. They have, they have uh, penciled five of us and take it. They told me that I'm going, Oju Zokalu is going, and few others are going because we did not support the emergence of my brother and my colleague, Senator Akwabio from uh, imagine the president of the Senate. Uh, first, we don't know who the they are. You know, the story is trending. Let's take some reactions. This is from Etim, who wrote, first, Senator Bukachiwa, now Senator Abu, both members of the ruling APC alleging Nigeria's judiciary can be influenced by whoever is interested in doing so. New levels of national embarrassment unveiled each day. Uh, this is from journalist Casey who wrote, Senator Abo knew he was going to be removed, but he accompanied Sema Akpabio to Ogun State to attend Yewa Cultural Festival 48 hours ago, LOL. Well, I'd like to tie in this story, Dr. Abati, because of time. In Anambra State though, where the picture of a senior magistrate riding a commercial motorcycle to work last week sparked outrage over the welfare of judicial officers in Nigeria. The female judicial officer whose identity has been withheld allegedly has no official vehicle allocated to her, despite her position at the chief magistrate's court in Ineni. Some users on social media reacting to the photo say the situation compromises the dignity of the judiciary while others called for judicial autonomy and for better provisions for lower court judges. Like I said, Dr. Abate, I mean, this um, Senator Abo's uh, uh, conversation brings up a lot of topics. And, and you know, I, I thought it was quite instructive that that picture 
of um, that judge was uh, her identity was withheld because it would be a shame if her identity is out there and she's out there riding, a, a, they call it Okada, to work. Your thoughts on both okay. stories uh, quickly. Look at the uh, last uh, MBA conference mm -hmm. in Abuja. One of the major concerns expressed at some of the plenary sessions was the condition of service for judges. Mm. And the whole argument is that judicial officers who, you know, uh, sit in courts, if uh, they are working under very poor conditions, then of course, how do they deliver justice? Now, two days ago, as part of the fallout of that conference, the Bar Association, led by the president, mm. went to meet with the Attorney General of the Federation. And the major issue uh, that, uh, you know, the president, MBA president, took up with uh, the uh, AGF, uh, Latifa Bemiers here, is how to address the issue of the take on pay of judges so that judges are not in distress. Mm. Now, before this woman's case in uh, Nene, I think that's in Anambra State, Nene, yeah. you will recall that a few years back, maybe about two, three years back, I think we discussed it on, 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 the, on this same program. Some uh, magistrates in uh, Cross River State carried placards over non-payment of salaries, non-payment of arrears and allowances. Mm. And the issue was that, how do you expect us to dispense justice fairly? How do you expect us to be above board, like Caesar's uh, wife, if you don't pay our salaries? And we saw that ugly scene of magistrates carrying placards. Yes. And now this report of a magistrate riding uh, Okada, Okada, going to Woko mm -hmm. on, on the back of Okada. And what is the story? She doesn't have a car, no official car, no personal car, and yet she's supposed to be impartial mm -hmm. unto death, as uh, judges are required to be. Okay, that's that about judges. The other one is about Elisha Abo. We discussed him earlier yeah. on, and we were saying that, look, it's contemptuous of their lordships at the Court of Appeal to say mm -hmm. that, oh, they were influenced by uh, Senate uh, uh, President Godswill uh, Akpabu. Well, uh, the senior president has responded to say he has yes. no hand in his matter. Right. So it is for him to respect the ruling of the court. And then he's describing himself as a hero of democracy. He said he's a hero and of democracy. And that a coup, yeah. a coup has been uh, <laughs> done against him. Now, who are these uh, coup plotters that he's referring to? And what makes him a hero of democracy? Maybe if there is time, we'll check his performance no, wait, he needs as a lawmaker. Know, yes. You know, what are those bills that he pushed? <laughs> exactly. what was, how distinguished was he in terms of his comportment, in yeah. terms of his contributions? Comportment? Uh, that yes. is so important, Very Dr. Comport comportment, comportment is important. I know, I know why that is. Because within weeks after yeah. being made yeah. a senator, he was found in an adult toy, uh, adult sex toy Yes, he toy, was uh, made to pay 50 shop. million naira yeah. to the lady. Has he paid? Yeah. I hope we he has know. paid. We don't and he assaulted the woman also. Yes, he, yeah, so, yeah. So, so, so compartment is very... So some of these are <laughs> hero of the sex toy shop. <laughs> hero of the sex toy shop. <laughs> Violence is too much on the morning show. <laughs> well, let's see, you talked about salary. We'll take the story in Abia State, where the governor of the state, Alex Oti, during an event on October 12th, announced that he will not accept his due salary during his tenure as governor, but instead will use it to clear salary backlogs of civil servants, among other pressing issues. He also advised attendees at the event on the benefit of family planning. Let's take a look. Everywhere I go, I go with my wife. I have only one wife. Yes, sir. <laughs> If you are unfortunate to have three wives, that's your business. My own is only one. And I have three children. And we can look after each other. Yeah. When you begin to have problems, when your expenditure begins to go above your income, me, I have a way of managing my expenditure without my income. Yeah. Within my income. Yeah. So we are not expensive. I'm not even taking salary. The speaker reminded me that I've not taken salary for four years. I will not take it for, I mean, for four months. I will not take it for four years. And the fact that I couldn't do anything with the salary, I don't need it. I think he's so exemplary. I mean, yeah. speaking about humility, let's just head over to Namibia, where President Hage Gengob, who 
was seen in a video now making the rounds on social media taking selfies with citizens while visiting a local bar in Windhoek. Let's take a look before we come back for a discussion. <laughs> hey! Yes, sir! Yes, sir! I mean, I don't, over exemplary leadership. Exemplary that, that, leadership. That, 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 we took you, the story of uh, the president yeah. yesterday of Zambia yeah. and yeah. now... Yeah. When you it. have a good leader, yes. the people celebrate. Yes. When you have a bad leader, the people cry. Absolutely. Hardship. They cry, yepa. They say, mugbe. Their lives about exclamations. Good leadership matters. Your vote Absolutely. matters. Absolutely. You will reap the reward of your vote. Yes. Absolutely. Yes. Remember. I was going to say that. Um, Dr. Alex Ote has demonstrated what, how important it is to move away from career politicians. Yes. Whereby he's had an illustrious career in the banking sector, he's chaired the bank, and now he's governor. So he's saying that he doesn't need the people's money to, um, you know, to, to run his home. Yes. Yesterday we talked about the fact that House of Representatives members were going to get um, buses, mobile transportation for their work. And we, we have talked about it a number of times to make governance mm -hmm. less attractive yes. so we can get quality people who are there, mm -hmm. not for the money, but to serve. Yes. It's, there's no problem, you know, if you want to earn your salary for working. Yeah. But if you choose the higher road in right. terms of I, I have enough money to make, you know, for myself, I don't need to be greedy. Maybe that the word is you don't need to be greedy. Yes. You keep amassing wealth and amassing wealth. At the end of the day, you can't finish spending everything. Absolutely. So very commendable. Yeah. And I hope other leaders will take um, policy. Law makers is 160 uh, million okay, naira each for before, cars. Before we go, <laughs> I saw something in the, with the president of Namibia. Yes. He, uh, is it only fine specimens of hypocritude that he should take <laughs> selfies with? Because I saw he, he, he appeared to be <laughs> blessed <laughs> There's among a man standing there, Dr. Martin. Uh, yeah, 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 to be blessed <laughs> among women. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, so, uh, <laughs> I knew you were going to go there, but that is so a, yeah, I think that was a security it, guy. It, it, Let it me just, help Dr. Batista. If you don't stop, I will sue you like a woman. We will sue you all. And I'm not well, about to give, but I will sue you. Well, all right. I'd like to thank you all for your great analysis, as always, on What's Trending. Well, that's all I have for you on What's Trending today. I'll see you all tomorrow.